Welcome to the tutorial for the Glind waistcoat. I'm going to start by doing the pockets on this. These are nice simple pockets. This is what your pocket pattern should look like. And this, uh, these are notches, this line is a fold line in the middle here. So they're sort of self-lining. So we just fold them in half that way, across that fold line. And you should have a pair. Obviously this fabric is plain, but just beware if you've got a directional print that your prints go in the right way. So there you go, two exactly the same. Self-lined and I'm just going to attach them to the side fronts. This is one of my side fronts. There's my other one. So again, you need a pair of these. I've interfaced these with a medium interfacing because I like a nice bit of body in the front of my waistcoat. So that literally just sits. There's a double notch and there should be a double notch on here. If I turn it over, you'll be able to see it better actually. They don't show up very well on this fabric. So that's how you know that side is that side of the pocket. We're going to just pin them into place and just stay stitch around the outside there. So by stay stitch I mean just using a slightly larger stitch than you would for regular sewing and also I just stitch very close to the edge so within that centimetre seam allowance you don't want to have to be picking out um, stitches. It just holds the pocket into place nicely so you can just treat that panel as one piece of fabric when it comes to putting the waistcoat together. So there you go, you can see pocket done. Nice easy pocket. Next up is the front seams. So this is the seam that goes over the bust. I'm laying a side front and a centre front panel next to each other. You can see the curves are very different. So you've got plenty of notches to match along the way to make sure it fits perfectly. I'm going to start by pinning on the bottom edge matching and then at the top edge, just check I've got, yeah, got my notches in there. So there we go. I've got those bits in place. Then it's really just finding those anchor point notches. There's one. Unfortunately, you can't really see them on the blue, just the white. But as long as you match them, You'll get the right amount of ease in everything at every stage. So I'm just going to pin these round carefully. Just a few pins. I, as you know by watching um, any of my other videos, you'll know I don't really like using pins anyway. I'm going to stitch a centimetre seam allowance all the way down from top to bottom. Um, so I do take them. tend to take them out before I get to them. But you do you. Sometimes it's easier to tack it if it's particularly curvy because pins can get in the way a little bit. And it's not the best practice to sew over them really, just in case. So easing that bust layer in. Now I'm just going to lift that foot up just to help ease that fabric in there because it's quite a tight curve. And a back tack to finish. There we go, one curvy seam. And now I'm going to snip into those curves so that when I press it open, it um, lies nice and flat and creates a really lovely shape over the bust. Remember the tighter the curve, the closer together you want those snips to be. And then I'm going to open that seam up and give it a really good press. There we go. You can see instantly I've interfaced the front panel as well. So both front panels are interfaced. There we go, seam done. So next up's the centre back seam. All the other panels are not interfaced because I like it to be nice and soft. Some people use lining for all the other parts. I've used self fabric for the outside of my waistcoat all round. So laying these centre back seams together, I'm going to pin and stitch a centimetre from top to bottom. There we go, nice easy seam. There's a slight curve in it to allow for your upper back. Let's press this seam open. There we are. Back seam done. 
Now for the side backs. Here's our back panel. Here are our side backs. You'll notice they're much less curvy than the fronts, but they do still have all these notches in to help you with the ease. So, pin at the top, pin at the bottom, match your notches again. Make sure those raw ridges are as close together as possible so that you get the best fit and the truest fit. And a centimetre seam allowance. Here we go. Easing that fabric in. I find it easier to ease from the top. So there we are, that's our seam. You can see there's a little bit of a curve in it. I might put some snips in the waist, but I think that's all I'll do for this one. The rest of it should press nicely without any snips. So again, open it up and give it a nice press. There we go. Lovely shaping, do the same for this side. Now we're going to do the shoulder seams. There's my back, right sides up. And there's my front, which is going to be right side down. So right sides together, pop a pin in your shoulders so you get them the right way around. And then again, centimetre seam allowance straight across. There we go. I'm going to press those open. So that's it, we've now got our back panel and our fronts joined at the shoulders. So we're going to bag it out this way. Okay, so the lining on this is constructed in exactly the same way as the outer. So I've made it up already. Look, you can see that's my back. Attached my side backs to my back panels. I've joined it at the shoulders as I did for the outer and I've got lining for my side fronts and actual fabric, outer fabric for the fronts. And I've also put a bit of interfacing here. This is mainly just a bit of extra support um, for the buttons and buttonholes. And I've left that centimetre seam allowance free just because it's less bulky. So that's what mine looks like. Now this is my outer that I've just made. So I'm going to lay that right sides up. That's my back at the top. I'm going to find the back of my lining, which is all from lining fabric. There we go, the bright blue. And I'll lay it out so there's no twists. And I'm going to start pinning at the shoulders. This is a really good anchor point to start from. Matching the seams um, is the key to doing this properly. And you'll get the nicest finish if you can match seams as best as possible so having constructed both pieces as accurately as possible will help so there we go matching more side seams this is the side backs to the to the center backs and then that's the underarm there so i'm going to pin the hem this is the back hem again matching those seams as best as possible and then down on the fronts, around the armholes. There we go, and the hems as well. Matching all the seams where possible, but leaving the side seams open. So they're both together, except these side seams. Those I'm not gonna sew. I'm gonna sew all this bit around here, the bottom, the front, around the neck, around the armholes and the back hem, but I am not going to sew any side seams. I'm going to leave those open. Here we go. Centimetre seam allowance as usual. And off we go. This is going to take a while, so we'll speed this up a bit. OK, 
Okay, so I've sewn all the edges now except the side seams. I'm just going to take all these pins out. You can see the side seams are not attached. Next, clipping and grading. There's lots of this. All these seams, try and trim off the little bits that are going to go into the seams just so it lies a little bit flatter when you come to turn it through. And you need to clip into all these curves. I'm not going to grade anything that's got lining fabric on it because it's so thin, I don't think it really needs it. But depending on your choice of lining fabric, you might want to. If you line it all in self, you might want to do that. Nicely clipped into the neckline here. Again, all the seam ends. Nicely trimmed. Now the centre fronts. I'm going to clip these corners down quite a lot so that we get a nice crisp corner and I'm going to grade this centre front panel because it's the um, the denim again so it's quite thick so I want to make sure it's nice and manageable. So here we go, let's have a quick look round it before we turn through. You can see there I've graded all of that front seam and around the neck on that panel. I've clipped all those armholes, trimmed all the seam allowances down and that neckline's had a lovely clip as well. So now you've got to turn it through. So this is why we've left the side seams open. Sometimes I prefer to do it through the shoulders but I figured this might be less fiddly. So we're gonna give it a go this way today. Carefully pull it all the way through That's one side through there. Get those corners out nicely, give them a little wriggle. And we're going in for the other side now. There we go. So I'm just poking those corners out. Let's have a look. There we go. So you can see roughly what it is. That's my back there with the nice bright lining on the inside. And you basically need now to roll these edges. You could edge stitch it all if you wanted to. I'm not going to today because I think this lining lies nicely anyway. But if you've done a self fabric, you might want to edge stitch it to help. But I'm going to roll it so that the lining's just on the inside all the way around and give it a press. Obviously edge stitching would help if you're uh, not sure about doing this. There we go, how different does that look? And that's just pressing it. It's amazing, isn't it? So there you are, you can see I've just rolled it so that the lining is just on the inside. You just get a tiny little edge of the outer on the inside. And it's come up quite nice and crisp. Um, so it's just joining at the side seams now. So here we are. These are our side seams. And we're going to put them right sides together, matching those seams at the top and the bottom, the underarm and the hem seams. That's the important part of this. So let's pull back that lining. So we've just got one layer and we're going to match those seams there. A little bit fiddly. You can pull it through a bit more if it helps. And this side as well. This is where you find out how accurate your seam allowance is. Pin right through that stitch line and then you want to pin your right sides together and you've got a couple of notches so that will help. So right sides of the outers together and then you want to take this lining at the top and the bottom and pop a pin in or start stitching your lining maybe four or five centimeters away from the seam line if you can as far as you can without making it impossible really. So I'm going to start about there and stitch all the way down. Again, centimetre seam allowance, 
all the way past the bottom hem and into this lining. And again, I'm going to take the sort of four or five centimetres, whatever feels comfortable at the bottom and then back tack when I finish. So here we go. So a little bit fiddly. So take your time and it's well worth the effort to get it looking really nice. Starting off with that little bit of lining, making sure those seams match. And then I'm stitching the outer parts together, the fronts and backs at the side there, into the bottom of the lining. There we go, this is what it should look like after you've finished. Take that pin out. There you go, so you can see it's just left a bit of a hole there, but that hole you'll need because you'll need to clip your side seam and press it open so that you can then join up your lining. So that looks all right on the right side. Remember to clip and press that, and then you're gonna fold your linings on top of each other and hand stitch. Or you could machine stitch if you prefer. There you go, that's my slightly visible <laughs> hand stitching. Not my best work. But that's it, apart from buttons and buttonholes, if you're choosing to do them, you could do poppers, you could do ties. We're gonna do buttonholes. So let's go for it. Here I've marked out the distances between my buttonholes. I've used five buttons, these are they. I'd recommend a 1.8 to 2 centimetre button. I think they look quite nice proportionally and I've used five. These are, let me just check, I think they were 7 centimetres apart. Yeah, so 7 centimetres apart if you're doing five seems to work out quite nicely. And I'm going to mark these in place. So I haven't got the pins in there. I'm just using my chalk to mark them. Okay, now I'm going to place my buttons on just to work out where I want my buttonhole to start and finish because I want the end of my buttonhole where that hole is, the one nearest the centre front, that's where the buttonhole is going to rest. So I'm going to put my pencil in there, give it a twist, just enough so that I can see. I don't think you'll be able to see, but that's where I want it to be. So I know that is where I want the end of my buttonhole to come. So that little hole there is right over the where the lines cross. And just do that for the, the same for um, all of them. Obviously I'm doing it by eye, but you'll maybe want to use your ruler to check they're the same distance from the edge of your centre front. So we've got the first cross. And this is my tester that I did. I opened one and cut one just to make sure the button went through. Yeah, and it does beautifully and it's quite snug because you don't want it to be too loose because your buttons will be popping open. And you can see it just finishes either side of the button. So that works for me. Um, so if I measure how long that buttonhole is, because I want it to look like that on the edge of my waistcoat. What is it? It's just over an inch, which is about two and a half centimetres, yeah, two and a half centimetres. So I'm gonna just mark that because my machine, I need to know where to start my buttonhole. It always starts at the furthest point rather than the nearest. So do what you need to do for your machine. You can see my sample I'd interfaced as well, just like my waistcoat so that it gave a good um, impression for pushing the button through as to how stiff it might be or how easy it might be. So this is my machine foot for the buttonholes, just lining it up. 
and there we go. It's doing it all for me. And I've chosen the round-ended buttonholes just because I think they look a bit smarter. So now we're going to do the button placement. So my buttons are going on the left side because I've done it right over left, which is the lady's way, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. There are my lovely buttonholes. I'm going to get rid of this chalk and I'm going to trim those um, loose threads off your machine. Manufacturer may recommend you stitch those in, but mine does all sorts of finishing and tucking and things, so I don't need to. So do check yours. Um, so basically I want to match up my centre fronts now. Again, this is a test to how accurate your sewing was. So they should be exactly the same. And I'm poking a pin in the round bit of my buttonhole. If you haven't got a round bit, then just um, stick your pin one or two millimetres back from the bar tack at the end. And if you turn it over, -da, that's where all my buttons need to go. So I'm going to use a little bit of chalk again just to mark a little dot where I need to pop my buttons and we know then that they will absolutely match up with the buttonholes even if the buttonholes are slightly out so that hole nearest the centre front should be over that chalk dot when you sew them on as if by magic there we go I've sewn those on they all line up beautifully and I'm just going to use, this is a buttonhole chisel, I'm going to use this to slice my buttonholes because I get a bit nervous. I'm not good at using seam rippers and things like that. And when I worked in industry, you had this magic buttonhole machine that would just cut it and stitch it and it would all be done for you. So I'm by no means an expert at this. Um, so I just rock it backwards and forwards between the stitching. And then I'll just check that's gone all the way through with my scissors. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's all snipped through. Check my button goes through nicely before I cut all the others. Perfect. So I'm just going to do that for all the other ones now. There you go. That's the glind waistcoat you should have one that looks pretty much like this too enjoy <laughs>